Today we're looking at another sequence from episode one where Otis has to have a school bully over to do a project. We've got some day interior shots, then we've got some late afternoon exterior shots, and then finally it finishes off with a night interior. So we're gonna to get to see the character of their house at night, where previously we've only seen it during the day. Let's dive in with this shot first. Now this is a really simple one to break down because we've only got light coming from this side. This window is motivating everything. We do have points of interest in the back, which we can call out. We've got this, which I believe is his mother's study. So there's just some windows and things in the back just there. Helps to keep this uh, nice and illuminated so it's not just a dark area. So we are getting some layering. And it's something that um, we've had to do on shoot. So if we have a room which has glass doors or anything, we'll often put a light in the other room to make sure that the levels are up so that we don't just get dark areas if we don't want that. We have no actual interior lights on that we can see in this shot. So it's interesting to see the tonality of everything is slightly muted just here, not rich and warm like we're getting from that tungsten vibe earlier in the morning. Lighting wise on his face, there's an obvious downside here. But in keeping with everything that we've seen so far, it's not a massive ratio between the key and the fill and everything in the room is pretty much playing to this. They've got a net in front of the window here, which is helping to diffuse the light. And that is a cheat which you can use um, in any shoot you like. It's just so easy to throw a net in front of the window and that allows you to have a practical um, set piece which is going to help you to diffuse the light. On top of that, it also stops you from seeing anything outside. So if the exterior isn't really matching what you want for that time of day, then this just completely bleaches out and means that you don't get any distractions from that. In addition to that, I'm assuming that these aren't pure white. So they do look like they're slightly off-white and that's a good tip if you are creating a scene like this and you're bringing in some net curtains. If you go for the whitest, brightest version of that, it's going to be a lot brighter in your shot. If you go for something which is slightly off-white, then it plays down a little bit level-wise and that can help you out because you're gonna be hitting it with all the light that you're pushing through into the room. So by doing that, you don't make it um, distractingly bright and it helps you to control things a little bit better. Something to consider then, see if you can get something that isn't super white if you're doing this kind of thing because it will help you to control things, no doubt. So after this, move to the front door. Uh, it would kind of make sense that the light is coming from the other side of the house, so this is much cooler, uh, sort of more sky light feel to it. And as he steps into the light, we see in his eyes catch light. So it does feel like there's a four foot frame or maybe something a little bit bigger, a little bit further back, just illuminating him. Uh, from the left hand side, a little bit higher than head height. We are getting a bit of shadowing under his chin, but it's not super high. It's just at the top left hand side of his pupil there. You can see just in there on both sides. Downside on this side, and it's not catching a lot of the background just here. This is falling off pretty quick. So I would assume that uh, based on the fact we saw him step forwards, this is a little bit high, quite close to the door so that it's not actually, um, so it's actually falling off quite a lot and not playing too much on the background. And again, I reckon that between those two shots, hmm. So in this next shot, we're getting a lot of green from the background and you can actually see that kicking into all of the paint and anything reflective down this side, getting all of that green, even the window a little bit and the wood on the sides around here catching a little bit of that green. Whenever you have anything which is being hit by direct sunlight or certainly anything that's brighter than what your scene is lit to, all of the light that is reflected off that, so in this case, grass, hedges, plants, all of that kind of stuff, it bounces green light. That's that's why it's green. So you're gonna have issues potentially with green bouncing up. We get this a lot on uh, fashion shoots where you have a model in a field, um, particularly actually if they're sitting down because they're so close to the grass that you get green bounce underneath their chin. So what we'll often do is either, depending on the look that we're going for, just throw down some white or throw down some neg if we want more contrast, and that takes all of that bounce out. And you'll even find this in uh, scenes where people are standing up. 
neg will be laid out, uh, even on pavements and that kind of thing, to stop the bounce under chins. Now, here it's not an issue, it's just something that I noticed because you've got all the green playing in the doorway and stuff. Down is definitely on the side that we're on just here, and that's established already. We know that Otis opened the door, he was being hit by a lot of light, so they are really quite down compared to the outside, but that's fine, you would be. And then we move into the kitchen, lots of haze, um, stuff coming through the windows, and we're seeing this, again, habit that they have of half drawing all of these blinds. They've done it in the school, they've done it a couple of times around the house. Uh, we do have practicals lit now, and they are playing on the walls, so we're actually getting a little bit of light off these, creating areas of interest on those walls just there. It's nice, it helps to create layering, uh, this light doesn't seem to be playing an awful lot on anything. In fact, most of the light we're getting on Otis's hands just here and anything edging him playing on the table does feel like it's coming from this direction just here. Interestingly, we've got quite a lot of light coming from this direction as well. And that is probably compromising, I would say, the contrast ratio of these hazy lines that are coming in across this way. We are getting a reasonable amount of light all over the place. You can see stuff playing on the cupboards down here, but then we've also got stuff playing over this way. It's all coming in from every direction on that side of the camera. But on this side, we've got quite a lot of negative. So there's actually an awful lot of, um, for sex education at least, an awful lot of uh, negative happening on this side of both of the actors and all of the um, surfaces indeed under the table, obviously that's a lot darker under there, but it does show that there's no light really being shone in this way. We are mostly relying on what's happening on that side. The framing is cool here as well. We've got, let me draw some lines again, got lines leading across to Otis just here. So he is very much on that third. In fact, if we drew in my really super rough idea of where the thirds <clears throat> would be within this. Something, ooh, roughly, something like this. We can see that Otis is sitting on a third just here. All of the lines of the kitchen are genuflecting in towards him. All of the light, all of the positions around him are bright, but he is framed up against the only kind of tall cabinet just there, which is bang on the third, which isn't a window. So that's kind of cool. And then, <clears throat> Our bully, whose name I still can't remember, is over here just being down, out of focus. The camera does move here as well, so we get a nice move between the two positions, just pulling back and revealing him, and we get a focus pull at the same time. And indeed, that's where we get to. So we can now see all of that stuff we just talked about out of focus and he is now framed up on this other third that we have just here, which, I'll put that in just again, sort of like something like this. This is super, super rough. Let's chuck these across. Now, if you haven't, ooh, that's a terrible, that's not anywhere near it. Ugh, something like that. So if you haven't tried putting frame guides on your cameras, it's actually really useful when you're looking to uh, position things and looking to mark out where actors are gonna be or where you're gonna do a camera move to. Having some kind of guide will help you to do that. Depending on what you're doing as well, you might wanna give a clean feed and then try and overlay on your monitor so that you're not sending out frame guides to everyone because they can be a little bit distracting. So we've moved from having Otis squarely on the third, framed up really nicely with all the lines focusing in on him. Then as we move the camera back, we pull focus, so that helps us to re-focus where we are looking onto this guy, and he's now sitting on the third. His eye is pretty much bang on the third just there. And we're seeing a little bit of light catching this side of his head. So we've got stuff happening down here, and we've established there's other windows over that side of the house. We've got this happening all down side edging just here, and a little bit under his eye just there as well which is kind of nice, but we do see an awful lot of skin. The skin isn't playing um, really down and is flatter than I would go for a lot of the time if I'm lighting someone for beauty or something. It's very pink, there's a lot of neck, there's just a lot of face, there's not much structure around this area 
on the actor. It's just one big sea of pink. I, I'm not critiquing it um, technically. I'm just saying that that is the situation. So we've got a really nicely defined highlight on him. And perhaps if you brought that highlight up a bit and then stopped down a little bit, you'd take this down. But then is that what you need for the story? I often fall into the trap when I'm looking at frames like this of thinking about how I would do it. And I naturally have a direction that I like to take things because aesthetically that's the way I like to play a scene. Here, for serving the story, for serving what the director's vision is, for serving what the um, audience's emotional response to these scenes is going to be, you have to not necessarily force your um, your first impression of how something should look onto them because it needs to be what it needs to be for the story. So this all sits in the context of like teen drama, that kind of thing, which is much more high key, it's much lighter. Now at times sex education does go a little bit darker and it does have its very particular vibe and aesthetic, but at its core, it's still riffing off those kind of teen drama looks. And all of those tend to be much higher key and they tend not to have the really dark key to fill ratio uh, that perhaps I would go for. So there is a contrast there. It's nicely framed. The camera movement allows us to feel the interaction between the characters and establish the geography of where everything is within the scene as well, which is kind of cool. This frame just here is a really nice example of how we start to get frames within frames, and they do it a lot. We're also giving someone a very small amount of screen and then having a large amount of just nothing or scene, if you like, on the other side, above them, around them, all the rest of it. So just run through all of that. We've got our obvious frame just here. And then everything else, everything else is either black, it is just off to nothing around here. Gradually we get some kind of reflected light down the hallway. Got the hallway um, with the nice little bits of light coming in just here. And those are fairly soft. It looks like, yeah, just an HMI or a powerful LED through the window. There are nets in the window again. So those are diffusing it. Um, that might be enough. Going back to some things that we've done, uh, we, did a, we did a Christmas TV commercial and we had a similar setup where we had nets in front of a window on a set and then we just blasted an HMI through it. I tried um, it with a four x four silk in front, but it was just too soft then and we kind of wanted more definition for the light coming through. So I'd imagine that that's a similar thing going on just here. We're getting all of that cool stuff happening with the light catching on the walls, on the ceiling. Um, obviously you've got those highlights down there. And apart from that, it doesn't feel like there's much else being cast into the scene. We've got a bit of color contrast. So we've got lots of warm orange happening on the right hand side of the frame. And then we've got all of these greeny blue tones happening in here because of the paint. So it's quite cool. There's no uh, warm tungsten going on and we have our actor being played in almost complete silhouette. There is the merest hint on this side of his face of some light, and then there's a bit of something catching from what we assume is a window happening over this way, like that. And you can see stuff playing onto the top, the sink, all the rest of that. But it's nice. It's a frame within a frame, and then there's lots of stuff happening over here. It, reinforces a little bit what's happening in the scene. He's sort of observing the house and when it cuts to the next shot, he's looking at a picture in the in the bathroom as he does his business. So this puts him in their environment and lets it kind of wash over him. It's everywhere, it's surrounding him. And they keep doing this frame within frame effect throughout the entire series. There's some lovely examples we're gonna to get to in some future episodes and if you can get this kind of thing in your shots. Oh, it's just, it's so nice. It's such a pleasing way to frame everything up. Um, at this point, you know, I'm not even particularly worried about the lighting. I'm just looking at how they've addressed positioning actors, how they've addressed positioning props, and how they've then created within a space. And 
all of these are real spaces. I don't think they've gone out and built sets to achieve this. They've just found interesting ways of creating a cool frame from what they've got. So limited budgets, uh, you're not talking about making a film where you could perhaps build an entire set. They are working with real locations. In this shot, none of the practicals are on. I don't have anything on in the bathroom. We're playing silhouette. We've got the sunlight coming in. And the sunlight's important because after we've done all these interior shots, Otis's mum comes home and we move out to the deck and we have this vibe of evening and sunlight and it's really cool. So moving on, Otis notices something is up. Same shot pretty much as we had before. Obviously um, we're much closer in, so the background's a lot more out of focus, uh, but we're seeing basically the same things happening. Interestingly, we've got that same idea of highlights along everything, highlight, 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 all down here. And then once we hit the face, it's much softer. So just around the chin seems to be where it cuts off there. And then from here on up, it is soft, soft, soft. So they are doing this interesting cheat of hard light, soft light every time. So now we're moving out to the balcony, flat light for Otis. We're seeing the warm interior with some tungsten going on. Got the wine glass there, so obviously his mum's come back. And we're getting this frame, long lens, out of focus. We've got green in the background, excellent contrast between the green and the warm tones on them. And we've got this sunlit vibe. This actually bounces back and forth between a number of different angles and the light does change for all of these. So to start with here, we have Nice catch all down the side and you get definition on people's muscles and things once you have this light coming in all sidey so you're seeing muscles in his shoulders which is important because he's a little bit cool guy, he's got muscles, you know he's a bit bigger. Otis is worried about him flirting with his mum as well which is a little, a little bit of tension going on. She's catching pretty soft light just all down her face here and we're catching that smoke against the green and also because the light is coming in as we've looked at before. From this direction, it's just illuminating it and making sure we are picking it all out. But yeah, that's where it's all falling. But we're also getting a little bit from this direction as well because it's just general sky. And then I imagine we've got either some neg or maybe it's just the house blocking from this side to keep them down just a smidge. But you can see it on every, even this little thing just here is catching the light from that side more and then it's just curving around. So as we move through these shots, we see a couple of different versions. And actually, I think the saturation and the tone changes quite dramatically between these. Trying to film a sunset scene is a nightmare. Unless you have a lot of budget or a lot of time where you can shoot over multiple days, it's just so hard to create consistency and get the look that you are after as well. If you're in a situation where you are doing a sunset scene like this, sometimes it is better to go with multiple cameras for coverage because then you can tick it all off at the same time. Here it feels like these shots are catching much more and then this one a little bit less because everything's flattened out. You can kind of see it's just all flattened out. Uh, it seems a little bit cooler. We don't have quite so much saturation in skin tones, I don't feel. And then when we go to this one, they're practically gray. I mean, it really is. If we're focusing in on them just here we can see the sun is gone. That This is the direction it'd be coming from. It's still got some directionality to it. You can see this is down just here, but that's only because the sky is brighter on this side than it is on this side. And we're just getting the last little bit of daytime, but they are just gray compared to the previous shot where they were rich and warm. And that's something you're gonna find as you go through and you're not getting the same contrast and you're not getting the same light that you were actually everything changes very dramatically. Um, it's not a particularly easy thing to fix on a shoot. You just have to work with what you work with. No one's gonna notice this. No one's gonna look at these shots and say that they look completely different apart from us just here looking at things in too much detail. But when you're on a shoot and you're director of photography and you're having to try and make these things work, this is the kind of thing which is gonna trip you up getting a whole sunlit afternoon vibe for something, doing it in one afternoon, doing it in the UK where you might not get another chance at it because literally it isn't guaranteed that you're gonna have sunlight every single day. 
If you go over to LA, you're in California, yeah, it is much more consistent sunlight there. You could have maybe a couple of chances to do it and pretty much be guaranteed that you'll get the sunlight that you need. Not so much in the UK, and they've done a very good job here with dealing with it, but it's just one of those things that is gonna be out of your control. So you're either looking at bringing in lights, which is challenging, because the sunlight goes down, the ratios change, the ambient level drops, and you start to have to adjust things every five or 10 minutes to keep it consistent. And that that is so hard to do, unless you have a very experienced crew, very experienced gaffer, who can be constantly adjusting the color temperature, constantly adjusting the intensity of the light. To match every time you do a new take, it's gonna be a nightmare, and it can eat so much time trying to tell a crew who are less experienced how to do that because you're just gonna find they don't know what they need to do to achieve the look as the light changes. Something to think about, and I think that's really the point of looking at things like this, understanding where you can push, where you can pull, and where there are things which are gonna trip you up. I mean, even this Netflix production, which did have budget, it's not like they did this on a complete shoestring. There was budget there, it just wasn't enormous budget and there are things that don't matter like this probably doesn't matter so not even worth worrying about in that respect moving through we cut back into these and you can see that harder edge you're picking up more there's this bright light behind so the sun is probably feeling like it's just around here beaming out kind of make that red so you can see it we've got a real edge on him we've got edge down this side as well just catching on his shoulder which is cool but the rest of his face is just completely flat so my gut would be here, they have a big bounce, really big, like eight foot, 12 foot, possibly bigger, probably not actually bigger because they're on that um, veranda deck area. So I doubt they get a 20 foot in there, but certainly a 12 foot could be there, just giving a return. In this kind of scene, you can do all of that just with sunlight and a big bounce. If you're going for this look and you're not trying to get lots of contrast in their face, you just need to level back. So having a big bounce, in here which would just return everything that you're getting from the sun and you've got your talent there and then the sun's over here just beaming in that's going to give enough back to them that you're not going to have too much problem getting exposure and having massive discrepancy between them and the sky which could just bleed out to just harsh overexposure and you don't want that now at this point Everything drops back down. It feels like they're a little bit later now, although this is just over the course of like a few seconds in the scene and everything goes a lot grayer. Very different skin tone between those two. And then we go inside and it moves very quickly to a nighttime vibe here. So immediately we've got all of those practicals coming back into play. Those are really super bright, especially like this one just here is giving so much out that I feel like actually that is playing on this table completely. These that we've called out before, definitely playing and helping to cut out Julian Anderson from the background just there. Outside, we're going off to blue now. So that's really feeling like nighttime feel compared to the inside, which is very warm, very tungsten. Got a big soft light just here. I don't know what this is actually, this is kind of weird. This feels like maybe it's a skylight but equally, maybe they've just got a big like, light mat or something up in there. Um, but it's not really playing on Otis at all. It's just acting as an area light for all of this down here. And then we've got a little bit of something coming in from the doorway just there, just giving a bit of a shaft of light. Good layering just here. And they allow the actors to move through this scene quite a lot. So we've got quite a down area here where not much light's catching and then we've got a little bit of light catching on the walls down here and the piano and it's setting you up because in a moment I mean Otis is completely in silhouette now which is kind of cool and we've got that again frame just here the whole area is just framing up Otis and then we've got his mum just over here kind of not framed but because she's in front of those lights and things and she's moving, she is an obvious thing in the scene. Otis moves into his light just here and his mum's moving around as he does that. We've got quite a nice light on him and you can see in his eyes just there, it's a little bit blurry, but you can see we've got a catch light and everything does appear to be coming in sort of this direction. And that's gonna stay consistent throughout these next couple of shots. 
we've got quite a lot of light coming over onto that side of his face, getting a little Rembrandt going on. And then this side is actually more down than most things that we've seen so far in this series. So that's all down there. Everything else is the same. But when you're doing this and you're balancing the levels between different zones, because we've got a lot of area to cover here. I think you're lighting the kitchen back there. You're lighting through the doorway here. You've got a bit of top light so you can light this sort of hallway in between. And then he steps forward and he's got to get into this light. So you've got to think about every single position and how that all balances out as a pattern or across the whole scene so that everything looks right and the actors can actually move around and not, not be worrying about uh, if they're missing their light when they're doing that gets closer, you can still see a catch light in his eyes. And then we flip to a reverse as he turns around, his mum comes in. This is consistent, but obviously because we're flipping to a reverse shot there, everything does appear to flip around. And you can get a better idea of what's going on here. This catch light is just about level with the middle of his pupil just there. So we've got that going in here. And actually in this eye as well, just there, which is cool. We've got this practical, which is playing on everything over there. Stairs are being illuminated, so they've got another light source up here, just making sure that everything stays consistent and there's some light going on up there so we can see some shape and form. Creating layers within a scene like this is important. So even if you're saying I only need one fixture and a couple of practicals to do this, there's still stuff like the deep background and also general level for the whole space that you need to think of. We do have a lot of down now. This is really getting into the kind of contrast ratio that I kind of sit at for my what I like on faces kind of contrast ratio, regardless of story and everything else. This is kind of my zone, at least for now, until I get a new thing that I'm really into. And it's kind of cool. We got a lot of down on him. We can see the catch light. The catch light isn't super high. It is scooting in under his chin a little bit just here. So we've got that coming in like that. And you can see sort of the angle based on all of this stuff is roughly flat actually to him like this. As we flip around, we're gonna see the same kind of thing on Gillian Anderson just there. So we've got catch light in her eye off just here and similar shaping, all the rest of it still catching on him but we've still got quite a lot of down on this side as well. It's quite a dark space, so I do wonder if they actually had to bring in Neg for this, or because we don't have many white walls in this uh, house, if they just were able to light it and then just have that fall to Neg without any um, extra. A lot of the time, if you were doing this and it was a normal house, you'd have to add Neg. When we move to this shot just here, we find that the light is roughly the same for them, but they must be cheating it because where the light would have been before, it can't actually be there now. I don't think that it's anything that was in the background here that was playing on them. Those are just practical sources. All of this stuff going on in the um, bookshelf just there or this. This is probably what they're saying is the motivation for everything. So that is meant to be kicking onto them, but it's not that. I think they're doing two things here. We can see that on the back of her head we're catching some light and the back of his head we're catching some light. So I reckon, gonna stake it on this, that they have light coming in like this, sort of from off camera up this side, and that's catching them both like this, down their backs, and that light then is proceeding to illuminate their faces like so. So there's another light coming in from up here, which is that one, which is catching the back of her head, catching the back of Otis's head. And that allows you to just kind of cross key them. So you're lighting from one side for the one person, catches a little bit, edges this person, and then reverse, you're doing the same thing. And that way you create the illusion that it's all coming from this source, but actually it's not. The only other way to achieve something uh, like this would be to have um, maybe like a pancake up here. Uh, if you were doing that, the light would be just out of frame, skirted off so that it's not going to kick all over the room. And then that would do something like this. 
but it would probably go a lot more toppy, so you'd end up with light all over the tops of their heads, more so than there is at the moment. Here, there's a little bit of directionality to it, and it is catching their faces much more than their head, obviously, with the exception of the backs of their heads just there. So I reckon that's how they're doing it. Source off here, like that, coming that way. Another one off here, like that, coming this way. One for him, one for her. And then we've got all the cool stuff in the background still happening, practical sources, all the rest of it to give it pattern and color. The bookshelf actually is curious because I reckon that uh, they've just stuck a couple of little LED lights into this just here so that it lights up so that it's not just black behind them. And if you look at all of the rest of the bookshelves, they're not actually illuminated. And I feel like if you had a bookshelf that had lights in, it would be on all of them. So here, either they've killed some of them or they've uh, put some lights in there specifically. And we do get this really hot highlight just here. So I think that maybe that's one of the lights that we're seeing. So that just adds interest. Something else I'm gonna call out, we've got a lamp just here and there's a couple of things you can notice about this. One, it is playing on the scene. So we've got all of this light coming down like this, illuminating the area underneath the lamp on the wall, even playing on the floor a bit down here, I feel. So that's cool. It's actually doing something. But above the lamp, it is not nearly as bright as the bottom. And this is something that uh, I've actually done a lot on shoots. Because when you have a lamp, it wants to fling light up into the ceiling and that's gonna create light just going everywhere. People seem to like taking the level down on top, either completely cutting it um, with a bit of black wrap or something, or putting some kind of diffusion over it uh, to take it down a little bit so that it's not playing as much. And that's what they've done here, I think. Unless that's a natural feature of this lamp, and maybe it is, but I think they do it a couple of other times as well, so I'm sure that they're actually considering this. They're cutting the top so that light doesn't just fly all over the room here and light up the curtains and light up the wall and create a distracting hotspot. It's okay down at this level because it's not kind of taking away from what they're doing, but they do definitely want to control it. And as we move through, you can see a similar thing happening again just here. So then this one, we've got this area, draw that in red, and then this area just here. There's a huge difference between this and this. They've just capped that off. They've allowed it to play just here, but they're definitely taking it down on the walls. These also feel like they're not casting out quite as much light as they would do. So they probably either um, put a bit of diff over them or they put in bulbs that uh, lower in level. Now this is a fairly flat scene and we've got that center frame again. Everything is really centralized like uh, the shot in the classroom we were looking at before. We can see there's a little bit of cheating going on here. I wonder if anyone can spot this. So because these doors are reflective, where are they hiding the lights? And the answer is they're not really. You can kind of see them. I think that these are the light fixtures that they are using to light the space but they aren't the only light fixtures. I think that this that we can see here is what is giving the general level to the whole room. I mean, it's pretty down, but I think that all of this is coming from these. And then we have another reflection, which is kind of hard to see, just here and just here. And I feel like that is a big soft source, slightly off to this side, because we do still have a little bit of down on both of them down this side, tiny bit like that. So I reckon that we've got something big over this side, not entirely, you know, side lighting them, but something huge here all the way up, just kicking down onto them, creating a lot of the general light. But I think that um, we've also got quite a lot coming in with these ones as well. So what is the cheat? Well, the cheat is that they have pushed the doors slightly. They've just opened them a crack. So they take the reflections away from the center and just make it a little bit less obvious. You can see a tiny sliver of light in the center just there. And you can kind of tell if you look at the top just there as well, these doors are angled. They don't want to go all the way and open them. 
because that changes the look of it all and there's something behind that's just bleaching out to blue as well so they probably don't want to create more problems for themselves making a deeper scene but there's definitely something happening here so they've just opened it a crack it takes the reflections to a different angle makes them a little bit less obvious but i'm definitely calling that we are seeing some of the lights in those reflections and they're playing on everything in the back just here and then we've got that one big soft source just kicking onto them still got downside this side is still really dark everything down here is super dark but yeah kind of cool interesting way of approaching it and just a nice little hack for you to be able to throw in if you do have problems with reflections just move the thing a little bit change the angle a little bit and you can make it a little bit less obvious i'm still calling that we can see it but um, it probably was a lot more obvious when it wasn't pushed a little bit this all stays consistent we've got lovely light on them both just here kind of coming all the way down like that so this side of their face is nice and lit, very soft, very flattering all the way down them. No differences here. It's not like before where we had different levels of sunlight and then dark on this side. I don't think you'd had to have changed what you were doing an awful lot between these two setups. I reckon that uh, they could have probably even done this with coverage if they needed to um, and it wouldn't have really mattered. In the back, we've got a blue light coming in just with uh, those net curtains that we called out before. Everything's feeling very sort of classic nighttime vibe outside. It's a bit of a cliche, but um, have it go blue makes it feel like nighttime. And here we can actually see, yeah, get into his eye a bit there. You can tell where those lights are coming from. So there's one bright source just there in the center of his eye and that's got to be the key just beaming straight in and that's off up this way coming straight down to him like this slightly higher than head height um, it's not coming in flat to them and there is another little tiny reflection as well I'm not sure what that would be maybe that's just a passive bounce or something or possibly it's one of the other lights um, further in the deep background maybe they didn't turn off so here's where we're going to leave it. It's a nice frame. This actually, I think, falls to the contrast ratio, which I love. So it's got dark, it's got light, you've got some practicals in there. It's really cool. And it's cool that they're doing this in a working location. It's actually a real space. And they're having to work with that. They're having to create hacks where they can, like we saw those doors. And that's something that you can take away from this. There are ways of cheating things and knowing where you can cheat them really helps, especially like that cross key as well. If you have a scene with two actors, and that can even be an interview, doing a cross like this with two lights, one lighting the other person's back and face and vice versa, it gets you a really simple but effective way of creating a contrast ratio which is actually more like what we want. Next time we're going to look at possibly my favourite scene which just has frames within frames within frames.